This is a free house in Japan. The home value of this house is zero. In Japanese, these houses are called akia, which literally translates to abandoned house. It's a fascinating phenomenon that has been going on for several years now. As you may already know, Japan's population is decreasing and aging rapidly, and many of their citizens are moving to the cities living behind their homes in the countryside. So what's the problem? The government has realized that they can't let these houses go to waste or stay abandoned, and they've come up with a plan to give them away for either free or at a very low price. This plan has sparked a lot of interest and controversy and that's what we'll be discussing in this video. If you're new here, my name is Shumatsu Post and welcome to my channel. I'm Japanese and a long distance real estate investor in Japan but don't invest here in Japan. Later in this video, I'm going to explain why I don't invest in Japan even though I qualify for a mortgage with a very low interest rate or I can get a free IKEA house or three. Let's get started. First, let's talk about why Japan is giving away these abandoned houses. As I mentioned earlier, Japan's population is aging really fast and this has led to a significant decline in the population of rural areas because more younger people are moving into cities. As a result, many houses are being abandoned and left to deteriorate. This is a pretty big problem because it can lead to a decline of entire towns and communities. To tackle this issue, the Japanese government has introduced a program called the Akia Bank, which encourages people to move into these abundant houses for free or at a very low price. The Japanese government wants to revitalize the countryside by incentivizing people to move to rural areas and breathe new life into dying towns and villages. This could potentially create jobs, increase tourism, and contribute to the overall local economy. And you might be wondering why people would want to move into these abandoned houses. Well, the main reason is affordability. Many of these houses are being offered for free or at a very low price, which is attractive to people who want to own their own home but can't afford to buy one in the cities. Another reason why Japan is giving away these abandoned homes is to address its declining birth rate. Japan's birth rate has been declining since 1973, and the population is decreasing pretty rapidly since 2011. In 2020, Japan's population declined by a record-breaking 400,000 people. So a shrinking population and more people moving into cities like Tokyo, Yokohama, Osaka, Nagoya, and Fukuoka. It makes sense the government is incentivizing people to take over those abandoned homes for free. So what's the catch? Well, there are a few things you need to consider before actually taking advantage of this program. First, many of these houses are old and require extensive renovation. This can cost you a lot of money money and time. In Japan, rehab costs tend to be very high compared to many other countries. For example, my parents renovated a unit of their duplex after my grandparents passed away and we invested about $60,000 to make a two bedroom, one bath unit rent ready for Airbnb. And that's not cheap to fix up a small unit. To compare that with the rehab project I'm doing now for a two unit property in the US, it's about $30,000. It's a big difference. Even if you wanted to fix it yourself, these houses are often built in the traditional Japanese Japanese style. Don't expect good insulation or sometimes even air conditioners to work well. These houses were usually built to let air flow through naturally. So if you want a modern house with modern amenities, it's going to cost you almost as much as building a new house from scratch. Second, many of these houses are often located in remote areas far from cities you may recognize. So you need to be prepared for an entirely different lifestyle. Another important point to consider is the legal side of things. If you're a foreigner, it might be challenging to navigate the Japanese property market, so it's really important to do your research and consult with experts before making any decisions. Japanese is a difficult language, so understanding all the nuances of purchasing one of these is important. Sometimes you're required to live at the address for a certain number of years. That being said, if you're considering moving to Japan or want to live in the countryside of Japan, an IKEA might work for you. As long as you know what you're getting into, it definitely isn't completely free as they make it sound, but it is an option. For me and my family, as much as we love real estate and the ability to value add, it just didn't make sense. We wanted to live closer to a city, not far off in the countryside, at least for now. If being in the countryside and the traditional Japanese style house appeals to you, it might be worth looking into. But if you're looking into it from a real estate investing point of view, keep this in mind. One of the best ways to make money in real estate is called house hacking. 
the most typical way is you buy a multifamily building and rent out the other units or even rent out extra bedrooms. While not impossible to do this in Japan, doing that with an IKEA is very difficult for the same reasons that we've spoken about. Usually they're abandoned for a reason. Trying to sell it for profit later on as well probably isn't something you can rely on. While appreciation is never guaranteed in any market, it is generally expected as something that will happen in the long haul. Japan, on the other hand, only the land can appreciate. The house or building only loses value. For example, the structure of a newly built home will lose about half of its value in 10 years. So if you have land in an area where there is a ton of land, there will not be much demand later on. The idea of a free house, free land is an incredible appeal to many people. And I think in certain situations, it could be great. As a real estate investor though, I would caution people that it might not be as amazing as it sounds to get something for free. So let's recap who should be looking into buying these IKEA homes and who shouldn't. Consider buying an IKEA if you yearn for a home in the Japanese countryside far from the hustle and bustle of big city life. Want to reduce housing expenses as much as possible while living in a large house with big open space. Have a remote job where you can work from anywhere. Plan on owning it for a long time because you probably won't be able to sell it for profit or at all in the future. Do not buy an IKEA if you want to build wealth through real estate investing or not planning on living there yourself for the experience. Like to travel internationally because getting to an airport will be a hike. Japan's decision to give away millions of abandoned homes is a response to a variety of issues facing the country, including aging populations, declining birth rates, and economic downturns. By encouraging people to move to rural areas and revitalizing dying towns and villages, the government is hoping to address these issues and create a brighter future for Japan. Unfortunately, these incentives aren't enticing enough to make the kind of change the country wants to see. In my opinion, there's only one way to save these free houses from staying abandoned. Japan needs to let more immigrants in to take these homes, create jobs, Vitalize the economy. Since our birth rate isn't going to turn around anytime soon, this is the only way to increase the population of the country. To be honest, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon either. It probably won't happen in my lifetime. This is exactly why buying real estate in Japan is a very risky investment decision. You see, there are a few ways you can make money in real estate investing. The biggest reason why most people invest in real estate is appreciation. So if you buy a property, you expect it to appreciate over the duration of the ownership, right? So if you if you buy this nice looking house for $1 million today, you would hope it'll be worth more than $1 million in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? And the biggest factor that drives the prices of real estate is demand. So if you buy a property in an area where population is decreasing over time, you can't really expect the housing prices to go up. There are 1,741 municipalities in Japan and only 183 of them saw an increase in population from 2020 to 2022. That's only 10%. So investors are fighting for the 10% of the municipalities in Japan, hoping that their properties will appreciate. As the competition gets more fierce, the number will keep declining fast. Currently, there are an estimated 8.5 million IKEA houses, making up 15% of Japan's total housing stock. With the population problem I keep mentioning, the number of vacant homes is set to explode with projections of a fall of Japan's population from the current 126 million to 109 million by 20. 50. By percentage, it's number nine in the world, but by number, it's the biggest decline in the world. So in summary, real estate isn't an asset in Japan. In the beginning, I mentioned that I'm Japanese, live in Japan, and I own seven multifamily properties, but not in Japan. So where do I invest? I invest in the US markets where the population is increasing. It's a lot more work to invest remotely than locally, but for me, the hard work has paid off, and that's where I'm going to keep investing. What do you think? Would you live or invest in a free abandoned house in Japan? Japan, leave your comment below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and share with someone who might benefit from watching this. And be sure to watch this video next for more.